just want to say about <coughs> my life since I found Jesus. I was a daily cannabis smoker. Artificially putting myself in a better position than I was. I remembered hardly any of my dreams. I thought I was awesome to the point where I criticised everybody else. And I knew nothing. <laughs> I thought I knew a lot. My house was a complete mess. My, <laughs> My hair was a mess. Still is. So I met Jesus on YouTube. And he's, he's definitely changed my life. Um, obviously giving up cannabis, wanting to give up and having the odd spliff every couple of weeks. But in a sense, I'd like to change that now, I think. It's too much of a roller coaster ride. But... I've had some communication with spirits, understanding that they're there. I mean, just knowing the truth from AJ Miller Jesus on Divine Truth Channel has made a difference. Whether I gave up cannabis or not, knowing the truth has made a huge difference. So, well, I want to talk about, briefly, my communication with spirits so far. And I want to do a diary of this because I think it's quite interesting. So, the first one was when I was high. <clears throat> and I was watching, or I was reading something on the internet. <coughs> Probably was the Paget messages. But I just, just did get this feeling, shut the lid, no, pause it, so I was watching something, pause it, shut the lid, and get a plain piece of paper and a pen. Now I'd known about the Paget messages, and this is how he can talk to spirits. Um, and I wrote down the date, and then it came, something to say about Emily. And I thought at the time... A different Emily. Um, she's waiting for you. Right, so I went and messaged this Emily on Facebook. I just went, hi. Looked at her Facebook channel and thought, nah, this isn't right. Feeling anything. So I'm wondering which Emily. And I was scared to like think it was the other Emily. So I went back to the piece of paper and I was like, who are you? <laughs> and you've got a friend, Rosetta. Um, I think I wrote the wrong question. I was like, which Emily? And it was already as I was writing, I could hear Sia, 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 Sia. It's my friend Emily Sia, or my ex-girlfriend I lived with in Norway. And then when I went on her Facebook, it hit me emotionally, really emotionally. Anyway, and I think she's my soulmate. I'm pretty sure she is. I'm not 100% sure. I can't be 100% sure, but very strong feeling that she is. And um, so this this was a spirit, because I would never have thought that on my own. I totally blocked her off. <coughs> Completely and utterly. Closed that chapter in my life. So that was spirit communication. And it's made me feel a lot clearer, a lot 
a lot more, yeah, put my life together in a way slotted it together, made me realise what a mistake I made after when I left her and what a big mistake that was apart from having a son out of it, you know, that can never be a regret and I don't regret that of course I love my son and in a way the first Emily, well Emily Sia she always thought she could never have children so in a way Anyway, so so that was that, and I thought, right, well, I had that communication that was really high. But then a few days, a couple of days ago, no, this was yesterday. Yesterday, starting, I was, wasn't feeling good from the start, and I was reading the pageant messages, and again, I got this feeling, shut the lid, and get a piece of paper and pen. I wrote the date and I got Mary in my mind. Mary Third Sphere. So I wrote that down. And it said Hello <laughs> concerning Christopher. Now, once I'd heard the names Mary and Christopher, then that led me to my my English grandparents have got a had a twins children before my dad was born, and they were called Mary and Christopher, and they both had Down's syndrome. Mary had it more severely and only lived for two weeks. Christopher lived until he was three years old. So suddenly, right, this is the Mary and Christopher we're talking about and I could kind of feel that. He is in celestial heaven and he wants to talk to you. Drug addiction will stop it. So, you know, that to me is like a message. And the, and the other thing which I'll mention, after I wrote that and sort of start thinking, wow, so that was like Mary talking to me from the spirit world, I did get this, this sort of feeling wash over me. And it was nice, it was pleasant, but it made it feel serious, you know? And also with when I was getting the message from Rosetta about Emily's waiting for me. Well I was high then, so I was getting I was getting some yeah, serious close feelings then. <coughs> <coughs> no, my dad died. Um a few weeks ago probably nearly a month ago now. Yes, in fact, oh, it was. It was the 10th of September he died and now we're on the 13th or 14th of August, 14th. So over a month ago. And um, so I've been thinking about him with my new belief system and, you know, knowing that he's not gone anywhere, well, you know, his body's died, but he's carrying on. And then, last night, I'd just gone to bed, feeling pretty moody, early, like half past nine, I went to bed last night. <laughs> feeling pretty down, because, you know, I was on a down, I was on a downer. Um thinking about feeling God's love and everything else because when when that's the thing when you're high on the cannabis you can feel it it's just wow well I could anyway since this new belief system since hearing the truth so anyway 
I went to bed and like within about 15 minutes of being asleep I was having a dream that I was standing up and changing the heating which I did at my parents house earlier that day and I felt this wave sort of oh, of this what I call when I'm in contact with these spirits you know you can feel it but each one is different and you know but subtly different so this wave we actually knocked me over in the dream I thought way I felt some of God's divine love so I was quite happy about it um, but it was enough to start start waking me up and I was really hot I thought wow you know got the divine love and I was thinking no this isn't this isn't divine love. <clears throat> this is my dad. And he's probably, uh, you know, my dad died of cancer. Well, he didn't die of cancer, he died from the treatments of cancer. But, you know, he was a pretty, he could be a pretty hateful person. Let's just be honest, dad. You know, you know, you did hate a lot of things. And he'd let it get to him, you know, cross about it. Um, so, you know, you've got some stuff to deal with up there. But there was no doubt I had his presence with me. And how did it get to three o'clock in the morning? Oh, so, all right, well. All right, no, so it was three o'clock in the morning when I woke up. It wasn't as soon as I went to bed then, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it was three o'clock in the morning and I was, and I was actually, what I did was I talked out loud so that my dad could hear me. Because I don't know if you can read my thoughts or not. And this is the thing, this is why I'm finding interesting about spirit communication. Now the reason you would get a blank piece of paper and write something is apparently that is the easiest way for a spirit to talk to you. But they need to have acquired that skill of writing in the heavens. So it's obvious. I don't know because I haven't been there yet, right? <laughs> so it's a different skill, but that's one of the easiest. Apparently it takes them a lot a lot of energy to to speak verbally so you can hear them. Now maybe my uncle Christopher can in the celestial heavens. Um, and that's why he maybe wants me to stop drug addiction because he can. But anyway, so this writing method works. But what I could feel from it, I could feel him, I could feel these waves. I could get a sense he was there, I could get a sense of his his emotion. And I would say sort of ill at ease was the, was the predominant one. But I think it improved a bit when I talked back to him, because then he would have been able to hear me talking. And I was just so, so saying the sort of things like, you know, forgive those people who have done you harm by feeling the emotions about it, but repent for all the things that you've done wrong. By remembering them, then you should be able to remember every point in your life and you should be able to go back to your child. Anyway, so I was talking to my dad like that. And, and I was also saying I, that I love him and also, um, and then I, I remember sort of asking about Uncle Paul, and so Uncle Paul who, who died when he was twenty nine. Um, but I've just never got the feeling that he has died, and I kind of got that feeling from Mary as well. Sort of at the end, sort of saying, I just thought it, and I just sort of felt the feeling that he's alive. So they wouldn't be words. But then while I was thought I was speaking to my dad, but really I'm just sort of feeling things from him. I've got the feeling that the Uncle Paul is supposed to have died isn't hasn't died. 
And then he, I thought he gave me an address, which when I looked up does, didn't exist. I just made it up. And I also did another one of these <laughs> weeks things when I sort of, I made, I made this up. Mary third sphere again. So this was in the night. Hello all. I am here with Betty. Well, that's my grandma. All's well. Have you been listening to Ravenport? <laughs> no. Golden Gate Bridge. In so much as is a fitted condemnation. So just nonsense, gobbledygook. And I didn't get, I didn't get any feeling with that one. So um. So I think this spirit communication is very interesting. Yeah. But it needs to be researched more. And anything that I've taken and written down so far cannot cannot be absolutely right. For sure. But I'm ninety percent ninety five percent sure. But what I felt last night, these waves, these feelings, that there's no doubt in that. No doubt. So, um, I think that's what I wanted to cover about spirit communication. Thanks.